Hi, welcome to Mosquito Bites and Mystery, Florida's Unknown History. Now, when I was a kid in school, one of the required classes here in the state of Florida was a year of Florida history, knowing and understanding the history of the Sunshine State. We're recording this in Florida. I am born in Florida. I was bred in Florida. I get bored in Florida, but I also have fun in Florida. I'm a Florida guy. You've heard the stories of the Florida man, and we've talked and laughed about that in the past. Uh, but for this series, we're going to take what are real snippets of unknown, maybe, Florida history for a lot of us, and talk about the implications, the spiritual implications of those, if you will. And so the first one is I want to talk to you about Florida's most famous divorce. The divorce takes place in the world of Henry Flagler. Henry Flagler, big name here in the state of Florida, when his first wife died in 1881, Flagler and her nurse, Alice Shorts, were by her side. Two years later, Alice and Henry Flagler were married. She was 16 years younger than Flagler, although that caused a little bit of ripple and some speculation. Nothing wrong with that. She was there as a caretaker and very close to the family. After their marriage, though, Flagler noticed that his bride was doing some strange things. For example, she would use coffee cream on her skin. She would put dye on her cheeks. And she told the people that the Tsar of Russia was in love with her and was coming to take her away. Most of that is not normal behavior. She worried that Flagler's staff members were Russian spies. At social events, she would often fly into fits of anger. And about the same time, Mary Lily Keenan happened to catch Henry Flagler's eye. By this time, he's 71 years old. She was 34. Uh, they began dating, and as people began to talk, Mary insisted that maybe they should get married. The problem? <laughs> Flagler was married. And so, Flagler was willing to ship his wife off to an insane asylum. But he found that in Florida, insanity was not grounds for divorce. Now, this created a problem for Henry Flagler because he was convinced that his wife was crazy and a loon. She thought, the Russian Tsar was coming after her because he's in love with her. But he couldn't put her away in an asylum and divorce her because that wasn't grounds for divorce, and he wanted to get married. So what did he do? Well, the law would have to be changed. And so Henry Flagler decided that the law needed to be changed in a state that was controlled by Baptist. That's right, Baptist. At one time, if you're a Baptist, you at one time were very influential in the state of Florida. The legislature was in no mood to make it easier to get a divorce because, for the most part, uh, the church always is going to be pro-marriage. Flagler wants to break the rules. At the time, um, there was a university here in Central Florida, Stetson University in Deland, Florida, that had strong ties to the Baptist church. Stetson, as its origins, was a Baptist college. And his president was a powerful leader in the church statewide. Flagler AIDS began a lobbying campaign. And suddenly, the state legislature mysteriously decided to change its mind and change the law that would allow Flagler the freedom to put his wife in the asylum. That would be grounds to divorce her so he could get married again. Oh, and at the same time. Flagler made a generous donation to Stetson to build Flagler Hall, which still stands to this day. So, Flagler built Stetson a building. The president of Stetson, powerful influence in the state of Florida, helped push through legislation, used his influence to make sure that the law was changed. Flagler got his divorce. He married Mary. And then five years later, the law in Florida was changed back to what it originally was before they had changed the law that opened the door for Flagler to get married. I told you. 
it is Florida's most famous divorce that nobody really pays any attention to and never heard of. Flagler died in 1913. Mary died just four years later at the age of 50. Ever since that time, just so you know, to put a layer of conspiracy through it, Mary's second marriage, it was always speculated that her second husband had poisoned her. Meanwhile, Alice lived until 1930, passing her time in the asylum, waiting for the Russian czar to come get her, which he never did. Florida's strangest and most famous divorce. What's the point? Well, Henry Flagler is a name that is known throughout Florida. His influence throughout the state of Florida, the development of Florida is very well known. Um, from railroads to buildings to halls and universities, Flagler was a mover and shaker in Florida industry, well respected. And yet, behind the scenes, flawed just like everybody else. The point, very simple. It doesn't matter how great you are, and it doesn't matter how ungreat you are in the eyes of others. We all are people, and people have our rough spots. But yet in every situation, every person, every individual is someone who is loved by God. And each person individual is someone who's created in God's image. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, one of the challenges is to love people, flaws and all and to be able to love them in spite of their flaws and shortcomings, even when we don't completely understand it. And for the most part, we don't have the window to understand what's really happening in most people's lives. The story of Henry Flagler and his three wives has become the stuff that is talked about, but only in those corners of history that don't want to dive too deep into the details of how this powerful businessman was able to influence a state legislature and a college by the purpose by purchasing a building and giving money only to have a law change back to go back to the way it originally was after the divorce was a done deal. So if anyone ever asks what is one of the most famous divorces in Florida that no one ever heard of, oh, that would be Henry Flagler. That's right. Henry Flagler. And that's this issue of mosquito bites and mystery, Florida's unknown history. But now you know. Till next time.